Hi everyone, happy Sunday. At the beginning of the month, I said I wanted to do a page out of Imagimorphia. I picked this double page spread in honor of my uh, color long, Foxy February 2021. As you saw, I'm starting off with a Prismacolor pencil now. <laughs> and Sidonia comes to say hello. This is really kind of a demo page for a few of the products that I'm trying to review this month, but I used a Prismacolor pencil here and I'm edging the main part of the graphic in black, like you can see here. I'm doing it with the Prismacolor pencil because the Norberg and Linden pencils are water soluble. I did test them and they do move quite a bit. So instead of using the black, colored pencil from that set, I needed a pencil set that, um, I needed a pencil that wouldn't move with water. So that is why I'm using the Prismacolor here. So now I'm moving on. Um, I did speed things up in some places here, obviously, and cut out some areas just because we got a lot to cover. Because <laughs> I spent hours on this page. I'm proud of it. And there's some things I wish I had done differently, but we are starting off with the Sargent Art watercolor crayons. I have the 24 set and I wanted to do a um, kind of galaxy look, space look. Um, I was using some ideas I saw in um, a tutorial video that I will link in the description. I just offhand can't remember um, who it was. But she had outlined the uh, main image in the black colored pencil and, and then um, I tried to follow that kind of format and um, I wanted, like I said, to give these watercolor crayons a good chance. So they are Sargent Art. They are a similar type of crayon to the Karen Dash Neil Color 2s, which, you know, are... are used quite a bit um, in coloring and I didn't even know these existed. I asked my in-laws to give them <laughs> to have them as a Christmas gift and that's what I got. So we I used a combination of four different colors. All the pencils and materials and crayons that I used I'm putting down in the description but I used a four color combo um, and I don't know why I stopped right here. So it was a light blue, ultramarine blue, Prussian blue, and violet. Oh, and I also used the black crayon. So that's actually five. Learn to count, Michelle. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I know it's a little hard to see right here because um, the light's so bright. But hopefully you'll see what I'm doing here in a minute. So basically, I just did a light blue in the middle. And then I'm working my way out in like a circle basically with each of the crayons just putting a layer i've been trying them out and i was having a lot of trouble with um with using a, a vastly different colors next to each other it's not i'm not blaming the crayons i'm blaming my inability to do this because this is i'm i'm very new at using these types of products so I decided to go with similar colors, um, hoping that would be a little more successful. I did not treat this page with anything, no gesso or watercolor ground or anything before I did this, by the way. Um, so I'm going to speed it up here in a minute. I was just kind of showing you guys what I was doing. Um, I'm also going to, eventually this is going to be like a pocket disclaimer for any any uh, product that I use that um, I'm not sure where it's manufactured <laughs> after the whole Arteza debacle. Um, I do want to preface all this by saying, with the exception of one product, the other two that I use in this, um, well, the other three that I use in the, two of the products I use are, are fine. The other two they're not, they may claim themselves as premium products, but they aren't really artist quality products. Um, 
and I'm just putting a disclaimer out there that my experience with the set that I have in hand may be different than what you experience if you order them um, just because sometimes manufacturers can change with those types of products um, sometimes quality can change very quickly so I can't sit here and guarantee that my experience is going to match your experience um, so just know this is this is what <laughs> I'm getting from the sets that I have um, and I always encourage people to check out other channels, check out other feedback, do your own research with these um, before you decide to purchase. So the Sargent Art, like I said, watercolor crayons, I didn't even know they existed. I just thought like the Neo Color 2s were it. And there's apparently a whole bunch of other watercolor crayons out there. So I did a little bit of research. You can see here, I'm just filling in around those colored circles with like the black, of course, to get that kind of galaxy sky look. And this, I, as you can tell, is the first layer of these crowns. And, um, and I'll, of course, talk a lot more about them when I do the full review video, which will probably be next month um, at the rate I'm going. So here I am activating them with water and um, I'm trying not to move back and forth. I'm trying to blot more with the water. Um, I realized as I was doing this that that gave me more success in the effect that I wanted. If I tried to just move the brush back and forth and as you can see I am using an art he's a water brush. Um, I did not get the watercolor effect. It looked way more like lines and it didn't dissolve as well when I used that motion rather than this, the, the kind of blotting motion that I've got right going. Though with the first layer, I did still have some issues. Some of it didn't quite dissolve. Um, so we will be going back over this. Now, I, again, I'm not going to fault the watercolor crayons in this sense entirely because part of this, I mean, part of this is just learning, learning how to use these products. And part of this is probably user error because um, I learned a lot as I was putting, <laughs> as I was putting this down and activating it. And I have to say, I got really, really, a little bit, well, really, really frustrated um, with how this was turning out to start with, just because, like I said, I didn't really know what I was doing. And um, the thing I've learned, one of the things I've learned um, throughout my coloring experience, and with these products, it, it reinforced it, is that... Um, these crowns are great and they give good color and they work really well but um, when you have materials that aren't like hardest quality materials basically they can be great products but you're probably gonna have to work harder to make them do what you want them to do um, and th that was the case here and I'll explain why um, when we get to the next step but with these, like I said, they, they dissolved pretty well. Um, again, I'll chalk some of this up to user error, but they, they activated pretty well. Um, and again, this is untreated paper. If I had used gesso or watercolor ground, which I do plan to try that with some pages, um, which is why we're waiting till next month because I want more time with these. Um, if I was using treated paper, these would perform a lot better. I'm mostly just trying to show, now see here, I got lazy and I started doing the little swirly motion and then I stopped myself and I'm like, no, no, blot, blot, dang it. And, uh, <laughs> it's really hard to get yourself out of that. This is, this is the first, no, I take it back. This is the second background I've attempted with watercolor crayons. I did try in a title page or I think it was out of world within worlds. I tried the Neocolor 2s in a format like this. 
it did not go well and I was very mad and I said I don't know what I'm doing and I just I'm gonna paint I don't even like it now I'm gonna just paint over it with black acrylic paint and call it a day and that's the beauty of these types of backgrounds like this try them don't you know I had really I had an idea of what I was doing but I really had no experience doing this and this was a learning curve and I in retrospect should have done a lot of things differently but a you're never going to know unless you try and you're not going to learn what works for you and what doesn't unless you try and at the end of the day with these books in particular I don't know about others but for the most part with most coloring books if you do something like this and you don't like the result you can just go over it with black acrylic paint and call it a day right like so okay you you don't like your background just go over and i don't even know if it has to has to be black acrylic paint if you use a dark color and it's thick enough just go over it <laughs> with paint and call it a day um it's it's no big deal and only you know unless you tell only you know what's underneath that layer of paint um so you know, like I said, while this didn't turn out the way I really wanted it to, I left it, and you saw it in the in the um, intro. I left it because it didn't look uh, absolutely terrible when I got done. That was the first reason, and the second reason is I wanted to show you guys what these crowns are like and what results you can get with them, and I just thought it was kind of like you know oh here's me using them and then I'm just going to go over them with paint because <laughs> because I don't know what I'm doing so that's why this is not a review this is a demo this is a th these are my uh, thoughts and my first impressions on using these <laughs> semi first impressions and um and and what I went through just so maybe others don't make the same mistakes I do and you can see what happens with somebody <laughs> who has no idea how to use watercolor crayons tries to use them so I figure you get <laughs> you get the worst possible scenario here and then that may help you make a purchase decision <laughs> in the future so basically if i can make it work it's it's not it, it's not too bad <laughs> at the end of the day i got really really tired of blotting right here and i was just like uh because it, it was just so much and um i'm gonna speed it up here in a minute and we're also just going to show what i'm doing on this side because on the other side it's the same technique and this would be forever long if I tried to show absolutely everything. Um, because this took hours and hours. <laughs> this this page. And uh, I it was a labor of love until about ha the halfway point. Um, and then I actually started kind of enjoying it. So yeah, we're about to speed it up. And you'll see me finish this one out. And then... I'll show you what I ended up doing once it dried and you can kind of already see um, that and and I used you know fairly hard pressure on these I mean I didn't really grind the crown against the paper which the thing is these are these are student grade watercolor crowns I mean at the end of the day that's what they are they're not artist grade and while they have more pigment than I would have expected they still don't have a ton of pigment so as I said you have to work harder to get more vibrant color with these um, and in this case I, that meant more layers so once I realized that um, you'll see in a minute I'm not thrilled with it because obviously I want a solid black background like the pencil uh, created. So now I'm pulling directly off the watercolor crown. There's two different ways you can use these. Well, there's probably other ways too, but the two main ways I know of 
are scribbling it down on the paper and activating it with water and then using your um, brush to pull pigment directly like rubbing the brush against the crown and taking the pigment directly from the crown which is what I'm doing here on the second layer because the paper wasn't 100% dry um, and if you put you know scribble the crown down on still damp paper you're probably going to tear it even though this is you know better paper than what was you know like Amazon paper it's still probably going to damage it so I figured I was impatient I'm like let me go ahead and put down another layer so that's a second layer and then I started to play <laughs> I was like I put a second layer down of the black the um nebulas whatever they are whatever these little purple blue thingies are galaxies what have you um I didn't like them they just looked like big blobs and they didn't have a ton of color so we went back I went back in with more layers for them and I also pulled off the crown for these and I'm telling y'all I like I like the result I was getting and you can see here it just maybe because the other layer was already on it and maybe because I'm getting more pigment and I don't have the scribbles to worry about when I pull off the crayon I feel like I was getting that more mixed watercolor effect that I was looking for when I pulled off the the crayons I've noticed I tend to get better results with these when I just use the crayon with a brush and I don't actually put it down on the paper um, I'm going to continue to try to use them on the paper like this, of course, because I want to give, and I'm going to do the same with the Neo Colors, because I want to give it all a chance. But with these crayons, I suspect my favorite way to use them is going to be just pulling off the crayons. And so now that that's dried a little bit, I am trying to go back through with yet another layer of the black. I had to use a lot of layers of the black crown um, probably four or five to get that solid black color I think at the end after I put this one down I waited for it all to dry and then I just went back kept going back over it. and like I said it took about four or five layers with the black to get that solid black background that I was looking for so these aren't now would that have happened with the neo color twos i don't think so i don't think it would have taken as many layers so yeah these are a little less pigmented what am i doing here are we going back over them yet again yes <laughs> so y'all are seeing me go back over again this like i said this became really tedious for me and really annoying <laughs> It's funny, I've been coloring now for almost three years, and the thing is, you're, you're, you're still learning. No matter how long you've been coloring, you, you still learn new things. And for me, it's, this year has kind of become a year where I'm trying a lot of new products. And I figured out with me and coloring, which probably surprises no one, um, I look for efficiency. I, I want to color in a way that gets me quick results and is generally an easy thing to do um but gives me like you know i want to have some nice artistic results and i want to challenge myself but i don't want to spend hours like i did here putting you know four or five layers down that's why y'all don't ever see me color with a colored pencil the way i should like the super light layers and then like four you know half dozen layers of colored pencil down on the paper for one flower um if i did that i would do i might get two pictures a month done and they would look great but that's not that's not for me that's that doesn't give me any satisfaction um that does nothing but frustrate me I do like I said I want to challenge myself and I do want to be creative and try new things but I want to find ways that I can use them use the supplies if possible and you know use them the way I 
need to use them that make me happy <laughs> so and this this does not make me happy doing doing so many layers now like I said once I put down a couple layers and I really started messing with these I started getting that watercolor look instead of just straight lines and circles I started getting the effect I was looking for now had I done this when I first started I may not have needed as many layers so part of this again is user error and I'm going to remedy this because I'm going to start doing more actual watercoloring um, not coloring really anyway here we go this was the end result after many many layers now one thing you notice I'm rubbing the paper I wanted to show you guys look at my fingers that's I don't know if that's just due to the one layer or that I put so many layers on there but keep in mind that though that using these types of things can you'll need to probably spray some sort of fixative on it when you're done now I'm using something different here this is the Faber Castell gelatos I've had some sets of these for years because when I was taking art lessons my um, the artists I was taking them from swore by these for mixed media they are they they call them chalks on the Faber Castell website but I would just call them maybe not necessarily watercolor crowns but I mean that's kind of what they are they're just different they're twi they're twistables <laughs> but I wanted to try these because I just didn't want to go through all those layers on the actual Fox and I completely changed my color scheme halfway through too I ended up going with a more alien looking Fox um, like a, tr a true galaxy Fox if you will um, rather than the colors I was originally planning to do so um, I used them from the first iridescence they have two iridescent sets but I used the iridescent the the one the first set of iridescence and then I think the snow cone one I use which is the next one after this one was from the brights set again it'll all be in the description I'm putting one layer down just like I did with the crowns but you'll notice these are creamier these are softer um, these can be used in a lot of different ways and I ordered some stuff like some stencil brushes and stuff because you can use these dry as well as wet and um, after my experience with these I do want to play with the these more so I did come back and put some extra down now we're about to activate it first off you can see there are less lines like I said these were a lot creamier and softer to put down um, and I didn't want to put down paper so I didn't get black all over my hands here I am activating these with water and this is where the magic started to happen y'all it again that that upper part was just so many layers and and again it was partially me probably and partially because the product just wasn't that pigmented with neo color twos I probably still would have had to do layers and I still would have been aggravated but it probably would have been less layers so <laughs> that's that's pretty much the best way to put it um, they're just I mean they're inexpensive watercolor crowns and I think they're great for anybody that just wants to try them and see if they even like them before they invest in like the neo color twos because those are expensive very expensive um, the gelatos aren't cheap either for a pack of 12 I think is that right um, let me see if I can find them yeah for a pack of 15 depending on which ones you get they could be anywhere from 16 to like $23 a pack so um, they the gelatos aren't inexpensive either but honestly I feel like they're kind of price point between the watercolor crowns and I love the results like look how easy they are to use now granted with these I knew I was going over these with pencil and so I didn't need a super vibrant result but I feel like y'all if I had went over these just a couple times I it would have been so 
easy to get that vibrant color. So these will be probably something else I want to play with for backgrounds. And like I said, there you can use these in a lot of different ways because they're softer than a watercolor crayon. They're just watercolor chalks as Faber-Castell called them. So. so there's my first layer and that was it. You can see any lines or marks that were there are gone. They just, they dissolved really easily. <laughs> this was a real show of the difference between student grade and artist grade materials. Like I said, you can get great results with the non-artist supplies. You just have to work a little harder with them. So I did want to darken it a bit, but I didn't want to just scrub another layer on there. I wanted to try it with like palette paper. I do have a Karen Dash palette coming. I just, because of the snow, it got delayed. So I would have used that instead, but the palette paper I had worked just fine. I just wanted to darken it a bit in some areas. And this was a little slow going, kind of like the watercolor crowns were, but I was impatient. If I waited it for it to dry and then just scrubbed in another layer, it would have been just fine. But I also wanted to play and try different different ways of applying. You can see the cat hair on that palette paper. I wanted to try some different ways of using it just to see. But y'all, this is where the magic started to happen. I actually was enjoying the experience with these for the most part. Um, like I said, that second layer got a little tedious, but it was only two layers. That's all I needed was about two layers. <laughs> and um, so I, big difference. I, I would say in this case, the gelatos themselves, I, I think I like those better than the watercolor crayons. They're just more versatile. They're softer. They're easier to use for me. So um, that is one takeaway I got from this. Doesn't mean I'm not going to use the watercolor crayons because I have some different ideas for those as well. Um, I'd like to use those like I use the gelatos here, just as a light initial layer and then come over them with pencil. I think the crayons will do great for that. I actually saw um, Anne from A Colorful Life did that recently in a Kirby Rosanna's book used them um, as a initial layer and then went over them with pencil like I'm doing here with the gelatos and they they worked fine they so I think they will work better for me personally like that but for other people they may like the way they look with backgrounds and stuff but like I said this was a learning experience for me as well um, in retrospect with the background I would not have put so many blue galaxy blobs <laughs> it kind of looks like um the little uh pictures of like nu like a nucleus that you see in school that's kind of what it made me think of the like the ones that were double beside each other i would have cut the amount that i used way down um i would have only done probably half of the ones that i had and you can see me taking some directly from the uh gelatos for this now the lighter layers are very light that green was very vibrant I can't remember the name of it but it was really bright and so but the other colors were a lot softer so I had to you know put down another layer or so and uh, but I still got what I was looking for a lot faster so I use, like I said, it was Satellite, I think Comet, and well, it's down in the description. Three of them were Iridescence, and then this one, Snow Cone, the very lightest blue, was, um, I even tried a watercolor brush just to see if it was the uh, water brush that was giving me an issue. But see, this was a very light color, so I had to, I had to play with it a bit. I'll tell you what not being treated this paper took a lot of water and a lot of layers of this stuff um without giving me problems the only problem i had and you'll see it you know later on is i used so much water that the u.s versions of these books are just glue bound they don't have uh, stitches in them 
and it loosened the glue and so like the the paper uh the page on the right side started to come up out of the book just because it dissolved the glue <laughs> i'd use a little bit of tape to secure it so but in terms of you know tearing the paper or the only bleed through i saw was the black on one side and that was just because i had to use so many layers i think but they didn't bleed through and the paper did kind of wobble and and get kind of wavy but again untreated paper is going to do that i would say this wasn't nearly as bad as amazon paper so i would want to use gesso or watercolor ground just for myself but like i said for this being a demo i wanted to see what the paper could handle on its own and I was impressed. I mean, really and truly, if I was like super lazy and didn't want to put gesso on there, I I would be okay using water-based mediums in these books. But no, guys, this is where the magic happened for me. I have been so intimidated by the Kirby Rosanna's books, especially his, his older ones like this, that have all the different images in like the little characters and stuff. So here it is all dry. And again, I learned from this. In retrospect, I probably would have just used the icy blue color on the left side and left out the gray satellite color. It was a lot of colors, but that's okay. It worked out. I'm using the Norberg and Linden pencils here. They are the XL colored pencils, the 72 set. And, um, if you've been the these pencils i am giving a full review video on next weekend um so i've been putting them through their paces coloring just with them and then i wanted to see how they would do over like a watercolor layer like a gel, this gelato layer and guys this was this was it this is where i started getting really excited about this page because i picked two colors to go over it normally I pick three colors if I'm doing like kind of a blend and honestly I probably could have just got away with the with one pencil on most of this but I did use two um and I just followed the the shaded areas that Kirby puts in for you like where the fur is shaded in and stuff that's where I went over with the darkest pencils was the areas that were already indicated as shadow which made this super easy for me. Um, in the, the block sections of color, like I said, you see all the little characters, with the exception of the fox's head, all the little characters that are embedded in his body. And every time I saw a picture like that, I would just be like, I have to color every single one of those because that's just who I am as a person, right? And um, it just always kept me from coloring in these books. And then I saw this and I started getting ideas about the watercolor crayons and the gelatos and stuff. And when I came up with the blocks of color like that, I am totally ready to do another Kirby picture now in this style because this turned out to work out so well for me. And it, like I said, I don't like spending hours and hours and hours upon a picture um i want i want to be creative and i want to try different things but i also want don't i get bored easily if i spend hours and hours upon a picture and um doing it this way with a watercolor layer and then pencil over the top oh this just clicked for me y'all it just clicked I have struggled with using colored pencils because again just I get tired and bored of using them on a picture for hours. I do not do colored pencil backgrounds. I did the one in that Joanna Bassford Magical Jungle picture you're going to see and I about drove myself crazy because it just took forever. So I want to use my colored pencils but I got to find a way to use them in a way I enjoy them and it's like I said, it's really funny because that, that video I was referring to with the watercolor crayons, I mean, similar conversations are happening. For us, for us marker gals, <laughs> a lot of us marker gals, the reason we like markers, and sorry, I forgot to push up the 
page here for a lot of us that like to use markers we like them because they're fast we get that if you like vibrancy in your pictures and you like markers it's usually because you get that punch of color that you want that you're craving really fast and in an efficient way um and that's that's why i like markers because i just i like vibrancy in my pictures i i am in awe of all the people that create these amazing pictures with like pastels and just really soft layers and they're gorgeous and i just for me personally that doesn't that doesn't work um I got really bored. I, I like coloring flowers and I do get in modes where I like doing colored pencil flowers and stuff. But right now I'm in a mode, I'm in a weird <laughs> place in terms of the pictures I want to color. I like, I like the more unique stuff. I'm not necessarily really big into just coloring flowers right now. Um, this when it turned into a galaxy fox like I wasn't interested in coloring this fox like conventional colors I just it didn't interest me but man the moment that I went all green fox head and you know just really unusual colors that just that's me right now I I want unique colors I want unique images to color finding different ways different looks for things that's kind of where my creative mindset is right now so um this was really exciting for me and like i said when the pencil went down and i just saw i was so excited i haven't been this excited about a pencil picture in a long time <laughs> probably the animal wonderland picture i did last year um, and that was a project picture because that took a long time because it was all pencil layers. Um, and I still think that one turned out stressful for more stressful for me than this one did. So it just it wasn't just the picture itself. It was the confidence I was building in this and like, oh, hey, I think I figured out something good for me. I think I figured out something special. So y'all are gonna see i mean not every day this is not what i'm permanently moving to <laughs> as i was saying i love markers because of the quick results and the vibrant color and with colored pencils you can get that vibrant color but it's not quick you either have to put really heavy pressure down real fast and limit your layers and possibly you can Depending on the pencil, you can get blends quickly with heavy pressure, but it is a little bit of work. I ended up going back over these with a green. I don't know why I used the blue gelato. I was like, this should be green. What am I doing? Anyway, so now we're moving on to the turquoise colors. I do put all the pencils name, pencil names down in the description. But yeah, use two pencils to blend on top of all these different layers and it just like I said being able to just do a whole swatch of one color no matter what objects are in there like the toadstools and the the weird looks like a mine entrance and the little alien at the bottom and the little teddy bear and stuff like I didn't have to and the rabbit I didn't have to color them all different colors I might in the future if I feel so inclined but for this picture I could just focus on this section is blue so we're going to use blue shading on everything and it just it really took away the fear and intimidation and overwhelmingness of this picture so um and like I said it just clicked for me like this this is how I can tackle these intimidating books and artists like like Kirby's books or Maria Trolley I haven't colored anything in her books um I can I've colored one picture in Clara Markova and I think that was a title page um but like her books and this this is a technique 
I can use in any any book. I mean, the Amazon books are a little more difficult because they don't hold water well, but if I use gesso or watercolor ground, I should be fine. But I don't know. This took away the fear of with me using my more expensive and more intimidating books. And and in retrospect, it's like, oh, well, this should have been obvious, right? But it wasn't. It, I had to physically do this before it clicked in my head that, hey, this, this gives you awesome results. You don't have to do all the details separately. So, but yeah, the picture just came to life for me as I was putting down this pencil layer and I was super stoked. So I am doing a full review of these pencils next weekend. Um, like I said, I will have colored a fair amount of pages I think this is the third page I've colored with these and I'll probably at least get one more if not two um, which for me in a month with colored pencils is really something <laughs> but I have tried the pencils over markers I tried the pencils just with a straight pencil colored picture in magical jungle so this time I'm trying them over watercolor and there came a cat and there went a cat I'm not sure which one that was <laughs> um but um I just just as a aside I do really like these pencils they are I feel like they're kind of a mid range uh between like a super soft and a super hard pencil they're soft enough that I can use them for a while like I broke these up, these sections up by days, I think. Um, like I did the gelatos and the fox head one day, then I did this section the next day, and then I think like the next day I did the other two sections. Um, I did that kind of for my hands because I was also coloring a lot besides this, but I also did it um, just just to break it up a little so I wouldn't get bored though by the last day I was like hey let's wrap this up <laughs> like I said uh, but it went along a lot faster guys I would have spent I would have spent two weeks on this picture if it had been nothing but pencils oh and there goes Leroy on the printer again if you haven't watched my live stream from last night um, I'm just gonna warn you <laughs> It gets, like, I guess, it, there's a lot of talk about cat butts. <laughs> we ultimately color a picture out of a cat butt coloring book, which was not what I intended, but that is where we went, and it turned out wonderful, and it was hilarious, and we had a great time. Um, I know some people might, like, I guess, uh, turn their nose up at such humor, but, I mean, in my house, cat butt is is a thing i mean when you have eight cats you you get used to cat butts not being necessarily like the most offensive thing ever oh they're offensive when the cat actually waves them in your face don't get me wrong hang on i'm trying to pull up the blind for leroy he's up on my desk and because he can't go outside he is throwing a tantrum this is what he does when he can't go outside, he jumps on my desk. Then he stomps all over the printer, just like he did last night. He jumps on top of my desk. He wants me to open the blind so he can see. And then he's going to sit there and pout until I let him out. But anyway, <laughs> where was I? So yeah, if you want to laugh, definitely go check that live stream out because it was, it was hilarious. And it did involve, it started off with Leroy and the printer. So, it, we had to color the picture in honor of Leroy. But it was a lot of fun. Like I said, probably not the most highbrow humor, but if you come here for highbrow humor, I hate to break it to you, you were kind of in the wrong place. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is really like... I don't do tutorials. Um, I just don't feel like I'm... I'm in a place where I can do tutorials because half the time I'm just using, you know, I'm just using markers and blending markers and stuff. I'm, I'm not doing anything really artistic or technique heavy. And there are so many other great colorists out there who use a lot of heavy technique work. 
that are great for tutorials. So that <laughs> my channel is not the place for tutorials. We're the place for trying new things <laughs> and playing around with them. And in this case, this is actually a little bit of technique. And I, as I said, I wanted to cha I want to challenge myself a bit. And here lately, I feel like creative wise, I'm able to push myself a little. And I'm getting really good results of that and I'm happy. So you will see a little more of this in the future. Again, no tutorial videos because I am, this is all new for me. And, and I share this because I know there's a lot of you like me who are just terrified of coloring in some of these books. And I like sharing this because it's like, oh, hey, I figured out something that works for me. I got over it. You can too, you know, try this. Maybe, maybe this will help you not be so scared. You know, like I, I try to share my experience. That's what this is. It's just, I don't know what happened there. Um, it's sharing my experience with others. I covered the page, obviously, because I don't want to, I ha still haven't sprayed it yet, and I just don't want to get black all over my hands, so. Really had to keep the cats off these pages, and of course, Oreo always wanted to come jump on the pages, and Leroy, and Sid, and like, all these cats wanted to stomp around on the book, and I had to keep them from that, because I knew they would pick up <laughs> the watercolor crown on their paws, now, to be fair, it's not just the Sargent Arts. The gelatos actually, when I rubbed, after they dried, when I rubbed my finger across them, some of the color came up there too. So it's not just the fact that it's a Sargent Art student grade product. It's just the type of product that it is. And for me, using fixative, I think I'm even going to put some wax paper between these pages just because the, of that... Um, of that trait of these types of materials so but anyway so yeah I'm hoping you guys will see me tackle some pro what I call project pages that you'll see me tackle more of these in the future and use new stuff like I said these using the gelatos and the crayons were new for me I have some other things I want to try with the gelatos that I ordered um some different stuff for and if it works it may even be a way for me to use my distress inks that have been sitting there gathering dust this is a year of using what I have and using my supplies and breaking out a little bit from my markers um now does that mean I'm not going to use my markers heck no y'all y'all still going to get plenty of videos of me using markers when we do when we do live streams and basic color ch and chats, it's going to be marker. <laughs> Just because that's, that's my comfort zone. That's easy. I can do, I, y'all know me, I can't focus on more than one thing at once. So, um, I can't do a picture like this in a live stream just because I would be super quiet and y'all would never hear me say anything because I'd be so focused on this. I don't even know if I could listen to anything in the background other than music when I was doing these. It just required so much of my focus. I also have what I call like the Michael Jackson glove on where <laughs> where it it's like a coloring glove that only covers like the right side or I guess the left side of your hand depending on which if you're right or left handed. And uh, I was also using that just in case I forgot the, forgot to use the paper. Um, just to, again, protect my hand from picking up the gelato, picking up the pencil, picking up the crayon, any of it. I was trying to do that. Now these pencils, like I said, I feel like they're softer pencils to use. To me, they felt very similar to castle art pencils. Um, and I love my Castle Art pencils, so that is not a dig on them at all. Um, they they are soft enough that they don't bother my hand. It, I can color with them longer, even with heavy pressure, than I can, say, like a pair, like a set of Crayola pencils or something. Um, they felt a lot like the Castle Art pencils, but they're also um, hard enough that I can get a good blend and they don't smear. 
I uh, other than the black pencil now when I used really heavy black pencil it did smear um, on the magical jungle page so like the black pencil will smear but like some of these others even the really dark colors I I didn't have any problems with them smearing like I do when I use heavy pressure with my prismas which is why y'all don't see me use my prismas much <laughs> So in that case, they, they act more like a harder lead pencil in that they don't smear as much. So they're kind of in the middle. And that's where I, I tend to like my pencils in that, in that mid range between softness and, and a soft and a hard pencil, like the quality. I feel like they have the best qualities of both, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, for a harder pressure colorist, that is, that is very beneficial. Now, again, these are budget level pencils. These are not, are they, they may call them premium colored pencils. Um, and they're very good colored pencils, I think, but they're not artist grade. You cannot buy them open stock. Um, and with the 72 color set, um, unless you are really experienced in color theory and layering colors to get results, um, you're kind of limited in the colors that you have but I will also say that I feel like they have a lot of unique colors and really nice colors and just as a preface to what I'm going to say in the review to me they work best as a complement to other colored pencils like I would use these maybe alongside my castle arts and my other pencils I think they work as a complementary set I also think these are a great set for either straight coloring or these types of pictures exactly like going over a layer of watercolor pencils where I only need two colors to shade instead of three. Um, I think that's where these types of pencil sets really shine. So I do, you know, again, you're going to see my full review next weekend. From now on, when I review a set, we're going to, I'm going to use that set before I review it. And that's why they get a little delayed because I don't know what happened here. I got distracted. There we go. Now I'm finishing up. But, um, no, it's like with the, when I started with the Wise Brandt markers last month, if I'm going to review a product, I'm going to use that product before I tell y'all how I really feel about it. And so that's the case with these. And I, now I didn't color eight pictures with these. You're not going to get that much effort with a colored pencil set. Um, but I think four or five pictures for me is, is a really good, a really good um, test for these. Plus I tested them in different scenarios as well. So so for these, I actually grabbed a pair of purple pencils and I tried to play with the grays a little bit because this is kind of a purplish gray. And again, I was limited in the set because it's just 72 pencils and I was looking for more of a purple gray and I just really couldn't get it even with the grays like, and I was getting to the point I wanted to be done with this and I was like this is not the color I want so we're just going to stick with two purples and go over that with the purples and it it turned out beautifully <laughs> so I was like okay we're just going to stick with the two purples and again it's all about it's all about getting a good result but also being efficient with it and um once I got in the groove of the colors that I had and seeing the results, it was just so much fun. I also went back off camera, like you, you've probably seen and filled in with the Prisma pencil, the little gaps that I still had, um, on that edging. So, um, again, don't know why we're having a big long wait here, but, um, yeah. So, full review of these next weekend. Um, next month I will be doing reviews of the watercolor crowns. I'll probably be doing reviews on like the Karen da comparisons. Those are going to have deep comparisons in their review videos because I'm really comparing those straight up against the Neo Color 2s and like the Gelatos and stuff. So we're going to talk more in those about comparisons of how they lay down um, with these pencils like I said 
in the review you'll see me compare the color chart against some of the other pencil sets that I have um, so you'll see some comparison but um, I've used those other pencils over time I haven't really used any of the watercolor crayons or gelatos much so I'm kind of learning them all together as we go oh here I come in and fill in a little bit with the prism now again this was a learning experience as much as I like the result again there were things I wish I had done differently I kept the the top half it, it looks okay but I and I had to top myself frequently out of just going over it with black paint um, but I should have just done I should have done more um, freeform little nebula galaxy things whatever I was trying to do there um, and I should have done less of them <laughs> I should have um yeah and then just there were a lot of layers and stuff like that on the bottom half of the picture I think that turned out really well like I said the only thing I probably would have done differently is not done the section with the gray and the purples I would have just done that whole section like the ice blue but I was trying to split like four even colors across and it would have done been better with an odd number as my my artistic teacher my art teacher would have said um it's better to use uneven numbers when you're doing art um there's there's a whole theory behind that and uh, my head hurts too much today <laughs> i'm having a social hangover from the live stream last night no i it's sinus there's we're having big temperature swings i mean it's warming up and that's great but it's causing the pressure changes are just wreaking havoc on my sinuses right now so today is going to be a very quiet and easy day after the next few hours so <laughs> but yeah i probably wouldn't have included this gray section i would have just done it all ice blue on that side but like i said this is all about learning it and and the thing is you make mistakes and you do things you wish you had done differently but i still stuck with it and at the end of the day even though i had to make some changes along the way stay flexible with this stuff don't get it just stuck in your head that's got to be a certain way that if i had any learning experiences to pass on from this is when you're trying new things just be flexible your color scheme may change what you're using may change i stayed flexible with it and i ultimately got a picture that i liked and yeah it just i i liked everything i used it's just the watercolor crayons for the vibrancy i was looking for for the background were a little difficult it was a little difficult to achieve um i'd be curious to try some different techniques for that and i just need more practice on it the bottom half turned great though i definitely want to just go ahead and do another picture like this so if you see that don't be surprised I did unfortunately not get any video of the gel pen stars that I had um, and the little little stars that go around the fox that you'll see in a minute. I actually uh, got that idea from a picture I was or a video I was watching from somebody and I'll put that in the description as well because I want to give them credit. They were using the gelatos in a different way and that's that's what I want to try next so I'm pretty excited to do that once I get my materials but um yeah I, I was going to use paint that did not go well with the white stars so I just ended up adding a bunch of gel pen <laughs> little gel pen and Posca pen stars and you're going to see that here in a minute because we're going to show you the final picture I also tape that little where the paper's coming up here is the final picture I also used um, the galaxy colors and colored pencil for his eye and I just love it I love like the little twinkles hang on just a second all right so I left like I said I left the nebula thing <laughs> and it looks it looks okay I just wish I had done fewer of them if I had knocked out like two or three of them it would have looked even better um, I again need to learn how to use those watercolor crayons 
for this type of background, I probably should have used something different um, because I had to use so many layers of the crayons. The gelatos were great. And again, I'm not knocking the crayons. That was partially my fault. <laughs> so, um, but being student grade, being the Sargent Art brand, um, they, they don't have as much pigment as the Neocolor 2s. They have great pigment for Sargent. I mean, I hate to say it like this, but for Sargent Art products, they have great pigment, but you still have to use a lot of them. I wouldn't have had to use nearly as many layers of the Neocolor 2s, but that's because they're artist grade. I'm not surprised by that at all. So um, I was surprised actually by how much color they did have, how much pigment they did have. That was surprising, but needing still more layers, not a surprise. So they performed as expected. The gelatos just blew me away. And again, they probably performed as expected because they're artist grade and they're softer and it's a lot easier to color with them like a crayon and then add water. So I loved those. I loved using them as a base layer with pencil over them. Um, and that's probably how I'll use watercolor crayons is to, watercolor crayons too. The pencils did great. As you see, it just, this just blows me away. His head is probably my favorite part of this picture. That alien green is just, with the galaxy eye, is just fantastic. I love it. Um, I love the colors I picked. Just again, I would have went with the ice blue entirely on the left hand side rather than adding the purple, but still looks good. Not, not going to have a problem with it. Gel pen stars were okay. I did like the little, um, in the video that I watched, she referred to it as like fairy dust. I do like that I added the little fairy dust around the fox. I thought that that added something extra to that, like just a little bit of kind of sparkle, I guess. It's a two page spread, y'all. I did a project page. I did a project page using stuff I don't normally use. And it was a two page spread in a Kirby Rosanna's book. I mean, this, this was like huge for me and it turned out okay. It turned out actually really, really good for me. I'm, I'm not weirdly, but I'm weirdly proud of this picture. Like I just, I think this, while it's not, you know, just absolutely top tier for me, this is, this is probably one of the best pictures I've put together using, de definitely using different materials. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this demo. I wanted it to be talking exactly more about what I was doing rather than just your standard color and chat. We had all that last night. Um, hopefully you learned a little bit more about these different products and how they go down on this paper and the fact and hopefully for some of y'all like me that are scared to color in these books maybe this gives you some ideas maybe this helps you think hey I want to go color in these books too and you can and it's okay <laughs> I will say one of the things that helps me and I had to ultimately do is get another copy of one of these books. So like with Kirby Rosanna's, I, I found the cheapest one of his books. I can't, I think it was Mythomorphia maybe. And I got another copy and that is my test copy. Now some people are like, oh no, you can't do, you don't need to do that. You just need to get into the book and try it. And if you fail, you fail. Well, sorry. I, that just wasn't working for me. Um, for like the crayons, I did test them in a little area in my extra test book just to see what they would do. And um, so that is another tip I would pass on. If you can do that, I would recommend that. It, if you're really scared to do these types of pictures, it does give you a little bit of cushion to have that test book so you don't feel like you're going to completely mess up the book you're working in. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. I will be at some point I will have two new release book videos coming out whenever I get the books delivered. Um, hopefully tomorrow. And then Tuesday, we will have another Tag Tuesday video for y'all. Thursday will be another collection video. And if you want to see my full schedule through the end of the month, um, I did post that on the community page. So 
Hope you guys have a great rest of the weekend. Hope you have a good start to the week. If you have any questions about any of this or any requests to see any of this done in a different way, uh, let me know in the comments. Thanks guys and bye for now.